Welcome to our Baxter hearing video about noise cancelling tinnitus headphones. Using noise cancelling headphones can actually make your tinnitus worse, not better. The problem with tinnitus is that the brain is forced to process distorted signals from the damaged ears, which it interprets as a ringing noise. By listening to regular music at normal volume, you can train your brain to adjust to tinnitus and lessen its loudness. Notched Music Devices Notched music devices are medical-grade sound generators, which can be worn to mask the sounds caused by tinnitus. These devices can either be a classic hearing aid, or an alternative hybrid of both types. Most models are worn during therapy sessions and have shown to offer some benefits. Using a notched music device during therapy sessions may help patients tune out the sounds that cause their tinnitus symptoms. Researchers in Germany hope that by notching out the surrounding frequencies of the music, patients could significantly decrease the volume of their tinnitus. The reason is that notched music does not stimulate the cortical area responsible for the tinnitus frequency, but it still excites nearby neurons, which inhibits the tinnitus signal. In addition, notched music has other benefits, too, and they have yet to become clinically effective. Sound therapy may take a long time to work but it can be very effective in reducing the volume of tinnitus. Specialized sound therapy devices use a series of specially designed sounds that emphasize specific tones and frequencies. The device is used intermittently, and its best results occur when the user is exposed to tinnitus sounds in the range of 1 to 13 kHz. Studies conducted on the effects of notched music devices for the noise-canceling earphones have shown that they can effectively reduce tinnitus volume for several months. However, this has not been thoroughly studied. Although notched music can reduce tinnitus volume, it may not be a cure for the condition. In addition, if it does not work, users may experience negative side effects. The Tinnitus Track system uses a customized MP3 format to reduce the volume of the tinnitus sound. A trained audiometrist will use special methods to determine the frequency of the ringing in the ear. The resulting MP3 files have therapeutic qualities and are small and easy to manage. Furthermore, the system is compatible with most devices, which means it is not limited to smartphones or laptops. Unmodulated sounds Previous studies have investigated whether modulated sounds for noise cancelling tinnitus can suppress tinnitus more efficiently than acoustic noise alone. Acoustic noise alone is effective in many cases, but noise cancelling headphones can help. A study performed in the Netherlands showed that fractal tones could be even more effective than acoustic noise for suppressing tinnitus. In this study, a match pitch was used as the carrier sound frequency, and the SL was determined as the hearing threshold at a neighboring frequency. To create these unmodulated sounds, researchers used a Butterworth notch filter that was tuned to a frequency associated with tinnitus. The notch filter has a bandwidth of one octave, centered on the tinnitus frequency. In this way, Amplitude modulation suppresses sounds in the octave around the match frequency, giving the acoustic impression of a slight flutter. While tinnitus has no specific onset or severities, a wide range of noise-canceling devices can be used to mask tinnitus. One such device is the sonic hearing aid. It uses a series of five broadband sounds, ranging from soothing to distracting, with each tone tailored to the specific level of tinnitus in each patient. Researchers also studied whether unmodulated sounds for noise cancellation are effective. A previous study found that white noise, which is less effective for tinnitus, was most effective for reducing sensitivity in people with ringing in their ears. The differences between the two sound therapy programs are related to the rate at which broadband noise is modulated. For example, a computer programmer can start their day with unmodulated white noise and switch to moderately spirited modulation periodically, which increases amplitude periodically. Although it is not completely clear how modulated sounds affect the symptoms of tinnitus, researchers have found that unmodulated sounds elicit more tinnitus suppression than traditional maskers. In fact, AM sounds are a better choice than pure tones for noise cancelling tinnitus. In the past, research has shown that AM sounds produce greater suppression than unmodulated sounds, as do unmodulated white noise. White noise the most effective tinnitus suppression comes from a stimulus that is modulated at a high frequency. High frequency amplitude modulated tones are most effective in suppressing tinnitus in 60% of cases. However, some stimuli may not produce as much suppression as high frequency white noise. 
This study investigated the effects of three types of stimuli, white noise, symphonic music, and modulated sounds. Sound machines, which provide generic background noise, can partially mask tinnitus and provide a temporary respite from symptoms. The traditional sound masker is a single-function tabletop device with pre-programmed sounds. However, almost any sound-producing device can be used as a masking device, including electric fans and table fountains. The most effective masking sounds are those that elicit positive emotional responses. Another method of masking tinnitus noises is to listen to soft music or low-volume radio static. While these methods can help people deal with tinnitus, they may not be suitable for all individuals. People suffering from tinnitus are advised to avoid substances such as alcohol, caffeine, and nicotine, which may affect blood flow. They should also visit a tinnitus support group or speak with a qualified healthcare professional. Researchers conducted experiments to examine the effectiveness of white noise masking to combat tinnitus. A recent study demonstrated that FM noise produced more suppression than white noise in subjects with tinnitus. The most effective stimuli were amplitude modulated tones and the highest frequency stimulus. However, white noise had no significant effect on the loudness of the tinnitus. Traditional Management of Tinnitus Traditionally, people who use hearing aids have to wear a hearing aid to manage noise-induced tinnitus. There are several different types of hearing aids available. For example, the Signia hearing instrument is a simple masker for normal hearing. It can also be used in a mixed mode for those with hearing loss. A water-resistant device is Aquarius, and Orion is part of the essential product line. Orion also comes with white noise and can be used by individuals with hearing loss. Research suggests that 80% of tinnitus sufferers do not seek care, and 20% seek treatment. However, this number is much lower when you consider that more than 1 in 5 people report permanent tinnitus. It is possible that tinnitus can interfere with your daily life if you ignore it, which will increase your stress levels. Noise-canceling headphones are a great way to manage tinnitus. Using hearing aids may help a person with tinnitus reduce the amount of noise they hear, although these methods do not guarantee complete tinnitus relief. In addition to hearing aids, you may also consider other types of treatment, such as cognitive behavioral therapy or acupuncture. However, you should also remember that surgery is rare and is not a good option for tinnitus. Surgery may cause more problems. Trying to control your stress levels and limiting your alcohol intake can help to reduce the volume of noise you hear. In addition to addressing the sound of the ringing in the ears, you should also consider getting exercise. Regular exercise helps you deal with your stress and fatigue. You should consult your doctor if you are having sleep disturbances due to tinnitus. Do not ignore them, as many tinnitus cures have no scientific basis. Consult with your doctor or the Tinnitus Association of Victoria for further information. Modern treatments for tinnitus are based on electrophysiological methods and the neurophysiological effects of tinnitus. A better understanding of this condition and the way patients react to it is essential to reduce the societal burden it creates. The next step is to develop more effective clinical interventions and illuminate tinnitus completely. It is essential to remember that tinnitus is not a disease that can be eliminated with drugs, but a good way to decrease the symptoms of the condition is to reduce the level of a patient's emotional distress. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.